Avidus the first uh, was a metal worker alchemist back in the early 1600s and he was called to the the palace in Constantinople by the Sultan and he was asked to make uh, symbols for the Sultan and he created a still secret process that we use today uh, and he took eight parts copper two parts tin mixed it in such a way that it can be uh, heated and rolled out repeatedly you can put a cup in it uh, hammer it and shape it and lay that and it and it had such a great beautiful sound and, and clarity and resonance that the Sultan gave him the name Zildjian and Avidus the first was a non-Muslim he was uh, Armenian so any name ending in IAN is an Armenian ending name which means son of the symbol smith and you know symbols were used back then for um, military use so we had the Janissary uh, marching band that would march uh, with the um, the soldiers and they would march to the sound of uh, drums and cymbals and you know horns the uh, trumpets for lack of a better description of what they were playing and the cymbals were very very small they were, they were about 10 11 12 inches they weren't like what we know today and there were other uses for symbols too they were being used in um, you know like religious ceremonies sometimes there's some folklore that they would be used during orgies and stuff like that um, but Avidus had such a um, you know deep knowledge of metallurgy that he was able to create this this alloy, and it, it sounded beautiful. Um, so he worked as part of the court in Constantinople, and he came up with the secret actually in 1618. That's when he was called to the palace. Now um, in the Zildjian history books, you see that it says since 1623. And the reason for that is that because Avidus I was a non-Muslim, he had to ask the Sultan for permission to leave the palace and being part of the court and start his own business. And he left in 1623 and set up a little symbol making business uh, in Samachia, which is a section of Constantinople. And the beautiful thing about this alloy is that um, the eldest male member of the family would pass it on to the next eldest male member. So that's how it, it would get passed down um, from century to century. And originally, um, a lot of the European composers were hearing some of this uh, Turkish um, military marching music, and they started to incorporate it into their own literature. And in the beginning, they started to request Turkish symbols. And then in the literature, they would start to specifically request Zildjian symbols. Um, so for about 300 years, uh, symbols were made in Turkey. And you would write to them. And you would send money. And they would buy the copper and tin. And, and they would make uh, the symbols that you requested. And the funny thing is, is that uh, back then, there was no inventory. Everything was made to order. And so there wasn't like, I need a little higher pitch to lower pitch. You got what they made and, uh, and you, you played it. So how did symbols get to the United States, I bet, is the, is the next question. How do we end up here in Norwell, Massachusetts? So uh, there was another descendant, Avidus, Avidus III, who had immigrated to the United States. I believe he was around 19 or 20 years old. And the reason that he came over to the US is that Things were not good for, for Armenians at the time um, in the early 20th century. Um, and usually you would have to go and spend some time in the military, and it wasn't good in the Turkish army for Armenians. So he Im immigrated to the U.S., and he started to make uh, candy for another Armenian in the, in the Boston area. And he decided after some time that he didn't want to work for somebody else. He wanted to make... Um, his own candy, so he started his own candy business, and he was very, very su successful. He had almost as many people working for him as you saw, you know, here in our factory today. So, around 1927, Avidus III got a letter from his uncle Aram, and Aram was one of the principals in the K. Zildjian uh, factory over in um, Istanbul. And the letter said, Avidus, you're the next eldest male member of the family. You need to come back to Turkey and carry on our 300-plus uh, year um, tradition. And Avidus was like, nope, 
not going back to Turkey, and I'm not making symbols because it's not like you see it today, the, the type of uh, business that it is. So it was actually Avidus's wife, Sally, who is an American. She thought it was a very, very fantastic romantic story. And Avidus had um, two young sons at the time. Uh, Armin Zildjian was eight and Robert Zildjian was six. And Sally said, well, anybody can make candy, Avidus. Maybe this is something that you could do and pass on to your two young sons. So Avidus went to the Boston area and started to investigate its, uh, some music stores. And he would walk in and say, my last name is Zildjian. Does that hold any significance? And everybody told him the same thing. If you want the best symbols in the world, you buy Zildjian's. So he wrote back to his uncle and said, if you're willing to come to the United States, I will continue the family business. So the uncle said, OK. And he immigrated over in around 1928. And while uh, Avidus was waiting for his uncle to come over. He borrowed a considerable amount of money from um, his wife's family. It's in the neighborhood of like $30,000. Now, if we pay attention to the dates I just mentioned, this is 1927, 1928, and we're really bordering on the Great Depression in 1929. So he borrowed a considerable amount of money so he could buy a building to make symbols in it. And it was an old uh, garage, big garage building that hold, held uh, old taxi cabs. So they pushed all the taxi cabs out. He bought a small rolling mill, an oven that would have been probably a little bit bigger than a, a pizza oven, hammers and anvils, uh, uh, copper and tin, and he set up shop just like uh, it was in Turkey. Then Avidus the third had um, apprenticed in the factory. I guess it was a rite of passage if you were a boy. Um, that you worked in, in the factory fetching water or something like that. So the uncle came over, he retrained Avidus, and Avidus knew from his candy business that if he was going to get this off the ground and be a real business, that he would need to make symbols that people wanted at that time. So he went out and he sought out the name drummers of the day. He looked for Chick Webb and Joe Jones and Gene Krupa, and they were all very instrumental, excuse, excuse me for the pun, in helping him develop symbols that they needed at that time for the music that they were creating. So Avidus was open-minded enough to take their, their feedback. And Gene Krupa was very, very uh, important in the story because he was telling Avidus, you know, the, these symbols that you're sending us to try out, they're great, but they're gr good for marching band or orchestral use. They need to be even thinner so we can uh, accent and phrase on them. So uh, we have Avidus and Gene Krupa to thank for the, the symbol designs that we have now.